Hi, welcome back. Today we are discussing about something that is very very special to young parents and this is what should my child eat? I feel the more important question to ask instead of what should my child eat is when should my child eat? Now imagine a child who is a newborn and this child is purely on breast milk obviously. Now when this child is on breast milk um he doesn't have the child doesn't have teeth okay and there are certain enzymes that get produced into our body with periods of time everything is not available right in the beginning which means that there are certain enzymes required to break down starch there are certain enzymes that are required to break down fats there are certain enzymes that are required to break down other food and everything has a growth pattern so as the child grows he is ready to uh, digest certain things and he is not ready to digest certain things that makes the decision of what should my child eat and when now when we speak about children now um, of course your mouth is alkaline my mouth is alkaline the child's mouth is also alkaline mouth is an alkaline uh, organ right now there are certain enzymes in the mouth that are uh um, you know required for the digestion of starch and uh when you when the child is very small all it takes is milk the breast milk the mother's milk which is so critical and so important for the child's future life for the child's future immunity but at the same time it is also important for the mother to introduce breast milk and feed breast milk as long as she can it is useful for the mother's health as well in the long run so uh typically when um, it is a time of about 10 months or around 12 months that's typically the time when the children start showing up their teeth very prominently so you will see that the child gradually starts getting teeth on the top teeth in the bottom and four teeth in the top four teeth in the bottom now these are called milk teeth now why are these called milk teeth now the reason why it is called milk teeth because that's what the child is supposed to have if you do not have teeth if the child does not have teeth do not introduce solids solids have to come in only when the child starts displaying the teeth now many would not agree but let me just prove it to you or explain some science behind it which gives you uh, you know a thought to understand whether this really makes sense you know the, when the child starts becoming 6 months every doctor today says that don't introduce anything till the child is 6 months very very good but the first thing that is asked uh, to introduce to the child whether it is our parents or whether it is our grandparents or anybody in the family typically asks us to introduce with cereals like let's introduce the child with a halwa or maybe an atta ka halwa or maybe um, you know um, in any form of cereal now the reason why it should not be introduced at that time i, I feel is because the child does not have tylen production now typically when the child is having breast milk from where does it have it it is this this tongue and this upper lip which which forms like a circle and that's how the child sucks the breast milk now that that's how the child is used to having his food over a period of 6 months 7 months 8 months now you start introducing cereal to the child okay now when um, till now the child does not have molars when you introduce cereals it means you are introducing starch when you are introducing starch starch needs salivary amylase or tylen production to be able to digest that starch which happens in your mouth okay so if the child has does not have the production of tylen or the salivary amylase the starch that you're providing inside its mouth is going undigested because the enzyme that is required to digest that starch is not present till the child starts getting teeth so it's it doesn't make sense to introduce cereals when the child does not have teeth what what you could do is that you know when the child starts having say for example from 9 months or 10 months the child starts displaying certain teeth four teeth in the top four teeth in the bottom what you would um, you know you would start doing is that you would give the child a stick of celery or uh, maybe a stick of cucumber or a little bit of tomato piece 
or you would put uh, pieces of apple into a netted bag or a muslin cloth and let the child suck on so when when the child sucks it you know the cucumber when the child sucks that um, a celery stick it is sucking that tomato piece it is sucking that apples through the netted bag or the muslin cloth now it is training its body to not just take that slopping action like this that's how it has been used to drinking breast milk right now it starts training itself to do it differently yes that is one also the salivary amylase starts coming into place the thylen is released because of which now the body starts getting prepared for eating other solids other go very slow when you introduce solids because you have to introduce flavors to your child by allowing the child to adapt to his gut very naturally very slowly so it does not mean that if i don't give that halwa to my child or if i don't give that oats to my child or if i don't give uh, you know the cereal to my child then my child is going to be deprived of nutrition no that cucumber stick is also giving nutrition that celery stick is also giving nutrition that tomato piece you know is also giving nutrition and if you're bothered of its choking then you put it into a muslin cloth and let the child suck on even a steamed green bean is so awesome for the child to just keep sucking on and and you will see that by the time you are having your food uh say you sit for lunch and dinner and you are having a platter of food you give the same you know a celery stick and a cucumber stick and a tomato stick and etc to the child and the child keeps sucking it on at about some time you will see, the child feels that he is eating with you the child feels he is eating what you are eating so that's because these milk teeth uh means that yes there has to be a progression away from your breast milk only there has to be something in addition to your breast milk but that addition necessarily does not have to be starch so introduce solids very gradually introduce nutrition very gradually figure out what suits your child what does not suit your child now imagine your child was used to drinking this breast milk when in that in that you know that it was used to drinking it like this between the tongue and the upper lip now you start giving a cereal which goes in through a spoon so it goes into the mouth of the child but the child is still used to that action you know now what the child is going to do it, as soon as it goes in there is no salivary amylase there is no thylen so now it goes in and it comes out so you will see a lot of children during the initial phase take in and they start throwing it out when they throw it out it it's it's not that the child is throwing it it's naturally coming out you know it's the it's the slop action so it's naturally coming out and when it is coming out what do mothers do now mothers you will see every mother do this they will take the spoon they will scoop it out from whatever is fallen in and they will put it back into the mouth i don't know if it's justified the body isn't prepared the body isn't ready for it now the next teeth that come after this milk teeth is your molars okay now what do molars do now molars are really responsible for the grinding work okay so when you introduce cereal make sure that the child has these molars because the grinding work has to begin and unfortunately when the and that's the time when the thylen comes in and the salivary amylase comes in and becomes a paste and the child is able to take it inside and then it is well digested until then not now i'll give you a simple example um i i my brother's uh, had a little daughter some time ago and and she was um, you know she was about i think 9 uh, months old and she wanted to eat food with us now everyone was sitting together on the dining table and she wanted to eat with us and i saw my brother's wife uh, my sister in law give her a piece of cucumber you know she gave her a piece of tomato she gave her a you know if if there is celery stick do it if there is a steamed bean do it now she would just take that piece and she would keep sucking on sucking on sucking on. she was so happy she was feeling she's eating what everyone else is eating she loved it and by the time we all finished our meal which was about 20 minutes time this girl had finished about 1 cm of that stick all by herself and she was feeling that she was she was happy and there were tits and pieces pieces you know bits here and there on her mouth and little bit on her that's okay that's okay so i think i was so happy to see it you know it was such a wise choice 
which was done by my brother's wife and i think it's this is what we are supposed to do till the teeth come yeah so uh, that is uh, that is definitely one thing that uh, we need to introduce to as the child um, you know moves out from milk teeth and it gets more lars and then all of the teeth start coming in we need to make some wise choices some intelligent choices of what we introduce to children and what we don't introduce to children why are children fussy eaters why are certain children so choosy and so picky about eating certain things and not wanting certain things because you give them a choice now if you unfortunately and i'm hating to say this but unfortunately it is parents who dictate the taste for their children yes it might not sound very you know very nice but that's that's somewhere it's got truth in it it is the parents that dictate the taste now if the same child is introduced to a lollipop or is introduced to a biscuit or is introduced to ice cream or is introduced to um, you know some other sugary sweet will that child want to eat that cucumber stick will that child find that steamed bean interesting no because now you've given choices which are unfortunately unhealthy choices and you have introduced them far too early so that far too early now the child has started getting fussy about food the far too early the child is now possibly uh, getting very choosy and picky about food because you have given them options which are against their natural body mechanism choose what you give because mouth is the only object where you have a choice about what goes in you have a choice of when it goes in you have a choice of how much goes in and you have a choice of the environment around when something is going inside make an intelligent choice make a difference to your children's food habits and i hope this was useful see you again in another session till then namaste